Oh, hey. I got my braces off today. But you guys don't care about that. Let's talk about batteries. All right, which batteries should we talk about today? How about these ones right here? We haven't talked about the 30 cell uh, scooter battery packs. I mean, you've seen them. I made a video where, uh, you know, I used them for an e-bike and that's what, that's who's been buying these. Anyone that wants to build that e-bike on that video, uh, then they're buying it. And by the way, there's like about a thousand of you guys have ordered like wheels and batteries, right? But I came across a huge lot of these and these are the original ones that are on the Xiaomi 356 uh, scooter. Uh, these are the stock ones. This whole fleet was decommissioned because uh, the companies, you know, they, they changed hands. And so all of a sudden they didn't want these. And these are first generation scooters. So now they're going to second generation scooters, right? So all of a sudden these need a new home and someone uh, dismantled a whole like thousands of these, <laughs> these little scooters. And so I got the batteries. I got pallets and pallets of these guys, right? And these are great because even though some of them are marked like this one, right? This one's marked with the next, but I don't know why it's marked. It's perfectly fine. In fact, out of all of these ones here, it's fully charged. This one's not fully charged. These one, there's one of these ones that has a problem. And that is the thing, that is the issue is that these are untested, right? And so there's quick ways to test them to see if they're gonna work or not, right? So when, if you buy one of these, it's gonna not come like fully charged probably because they've been sitting there and I just don't have the time or the manpower to actually test every single one of these, right? So that's why I'm selling them cheap. And so then what happens is that if you get them and if you go through a, a set of steps to try to wake it up and see if it's good, and if you do find that it's not good, I'll just replace it, right? No big deal. We'll just send you a label, you send it back to us, and then we'll send you another one that is gonna be good. Most of these are good, right? The vast majority, and only a few of them here and there have issues, right? And so one way to test it out uh, to see if it if it's working. See, these are blinking, right? So when they're blinking, that means that they're on and they're good. But most of the times, the ones that you're gonna get, they're not, not gonna be blinking. And so the way to get them to blink again is to charge them. And you just put a charger, you connect the charger here, and then what happens is that sometimes it'll start blinking right away, but sometimes it doesn't. It just stay like that. And then the light on the charger will start blinking. And so what that means is that the state of charge is very low. And if you leave it there, sometimes it'll take, you know, depending on how low the state of charge on these batteries are, it'll require maybe a few minutes to maybe a few hours to, I don't know, maybe a day or two. And then, because what happens is that only, it's only charging when the light comes on and it only comes on for like a split second, right? And so then, it only charges, it's trickle charging the battery, right? Just by little, by little, by little, because that's the safest way to do it, right? And so the charger eventually will, the light will stay on red, and that means the batteries are now charging. And after it turns fully red, it should only be about a couple hours for it to fully charge, right? And so that's step one. Then once it's fully charged, right, this light goes to green, if this light is still not turning on, there's a couple ways to kickstart this battery, right? So one is to press on this little switch. There is a little push button there. So what you have to do is you have to make a hole on this plastic here, and then you click on it. You just push it with something in there, and then the light will start blinking. That's one way to do it. Another way is to make a cable like this with the spacing is 2.56 spacing. Uh, we'll probably make these little dongles, these little connectors in the future, but for right now, you'll have to make them. And then what you do is you install it here on this little connector, and then you could apply the charger 
uh, power in here. And as soon as you do that, then the light starts blinking. And if the battery is fully charged, it'll stay blinking like this. But if it's fully discharged, then it'll turn itself off again. So then you can charge it through here or you can charge it through here. And the proper way to charge it is through the small one, right? It'll use the BMS. This one, I think it, it, it uh, there's some features on the BMS that it's, it skips, right? And so I haven't done enough testing to see what, we don't know if uh, it balances through here or not, but you could charge them through here. You know, there might be some higher risks of doing that, but we don't know. We'll do some tests in the future and then we'll you know, provide that information later. Back. But uh, plug here, it was the one that it was designed to charge. And so maybe it's just easier to charge it through there, except you'll have to make this cable, right? And again, we'll probably offer that cable in the future. But for now, once you have your battery and it's blinking like this, what can you use it? Well, you could use it to put it on a uh, scooter, the scooter that was designed to, or you could do build a DIY scooter and put it in there, right? Or you can build a DIY e-bike. And what happens is that this one has enough power, right? It's got 30 cells. Each cell is 10 watt hours. So it's 300 watt hours, right? What does it say here? Yeah, 280, but we know it's it's 300 watt hours because each cell is 10. Um, and so this one could do about 300 watts of power, which is not huge power, but on a DIY e-bike, right? 300 watts, that's enough to, you know, not have to pedal, right? But if you do pedal, uh, then it's even better because it uses less power. So we had a customer build an e-bike using this, and he said he got like somewhere like 20 miles of range uh, with the pedal assist. And so, you know, this is a pretty good value, right? Um, to get 20 miles off of this, you could buy two of these and then uh, just connect them in parallel. They make these little cables that you can buy at Amazon. And then you just connect those in parallel there. And then you connect that one, the one that's coming out to your e-bike. And now you got, like, I mean, you got long range, right? You, you don't have to worry about making it or not. And it becomes a battery. It's not super huge, right? It's about average size for uh, an e-bike. And obviously uh, with the, the doubling of the capacity, also the amperage, right? The power rating goes up because now all of a sudden you'll be able to do, well, 20 amps, uh, about 600 watts. And 600 watts now, you know, now it's getting a little bit better. So you could do that. What else can you do? By the way, they come in two versions. The only difference is this type of cells, the uh, LG M26s, right? These are the purple ones. And then the Eve cells are very similar they're about equivalent uh performance of cells and quality of cells right so it's just one or the other one all right one of the things that we are doing with all these scooter uh, battery packs is we are expanding the capacity of some of these store-bought uh battery boxes right this one right here happens to be one of my favorite ones the ecoflow Delta Mini. It's really small and light, and it still puts out a quite a bit of power, about 1400 watts. So you can power, uh, I mean, you can power that uh, AC unit with this thing, right? Um, the problem, of, of course, with ben being so small is that it doesn't have a lot of battery inside. So what you can do is you can expand that battery by putting external batteries. And what you do, how you do it is you put this battery straight into the solar input of this unit right here, right? So it's as simple as this. You charge this battery, then you make the right cable. It goes from X, XT30 to an XT60 back there, and then you just connect it in here. There we go. It's connected. You wait a few seconds. The unit comes up. It recognizes there's voltage in the uh, solar charging and there we go it'll start charging about 300 oh it's collapsing why is it collapsing oh, okay so that i realized this is the one that's fully discharged it's at 31 volts right so this one it's fully charged let's plug it in plugged in 
there we go, detected that there is a battery or there's a voltage on the solar charge port. And there we go, it'll start charging around 300 watts. So it's gonna transfer its 300 watt hours of energy from this battery into here. And you could, of course, always get another one. And now it's about the same size as the internal battery. Or you can get a third one and a fourth one. And then all of a sudden you got more battery out here than you got in there. But as long as you connect that in there, then you just expanded the battery. Now this becomes a much, much bigger battery that could now potentially serve your needs if the internal battery that's in here doesn't, right? And it keeps it everything light and small and portable. And those are the things that we're doing with these. Obviously, you could also get rid of these store-bought uh, products, right? Then you could also just connect these batteries into a 36 volt inverter and it'll do the same thing at a much, much cheaper price, right? And you could do way more. This is a 3000 watt inverter. Of course, uh, yeah, this these four packs right here will be able to do about 1200 watts, right? So you could connect all these cables in parallel and then connect them to the back of this inverter and then just operate that. So you, in a sense, what you can do is you can build your own solar generator, right? There we go. We just do put those two in a box, put a thing around, put the connectors, then you can include the charger. Bam, there you go. That's the beginnings of a DIY uh, solar generator that you can build using these 36 volt batteries. So the possibilities are endless with these uh, and you can build, you can get creative and build a bunch of stuff. And uh, these are good quality battery cells uh, and they're already made. So it kind of takes all the work of putting battery packs together for you and then you can build stuff. All right, so go build some batteries with these. All right, that's just another one of those batteries that we've had for a while and I hadn't had a chance to make a video about. So there you go. Now that you've seen it, uh, hopefully you can build some cool projects using them and then you can show, share them with us so that we can all get inspired and do our own DIY projects. There you go. Thank you. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.